The wire needs to be paramagnetic. I absolutely stress this. It needs to be paramagnetic because the magnetic field radiates off this at 90 degrees. It's going around the wire, but you can contain it. Those are magnetic field, field lines, it's like potentials, but you can contain it just like the electric field gets, con like if you have a positively charged plate and a negatively charged plate, you take a piece of copper, there's electric fields going across this. Even if I, if I have them like pointed, all right, that means there's, the electric field is always strongest at the point. It's gonna be between these two little fingers, okay? Um, the electric field line. I stick a piece of copper in there, it focuses that line and connects it, and boom, the energy goes straight through, okay? The same with paramagnetism and ferromagnetism, but we want paramagnetism, because ferromagnetism retains magnetic field. We want something that just works with the magnetic field, aka aluminum, tungsten, platinum, palladium, rhodium, all extremely good conductors, and paramagnetic. Aluminum is the most paramagnetic and also conductive. Um, I was looking at in terms of conductivity and magnetism, your best bet is actually palladium. Palladium is um, probably three times to four times less conductive than aluminum, but like, mm, I don't know, at least a hundred times, no, not a hundred times, like 50 times more magnetic than aluminum. Um, so you could wrap it with all these, but, and platinum's pretty good too, um, but it's expensive, rhodium, expensive, tungsten, I think is the only one that might be plausible. Um, tungsten would be good. But aluminum, aluminum is the most conductive paramagnetic substance on the planet. Not the most paramagnetic, but the most conductive of the paramagnetic substances. It's the fourth conductive, most conductive conductor. The three before it, gold, silver, silver, copper, gold, which are all diamagnetic, which means the magnetic field, the, it creates a diamagnetic field that wants to go in the wire. And the magnetic wire, the magnetic field is not concentrated. It's just allowed to rotate on the outside of the wire. But if it's aluminum, the magnetic field will get contained and it will go perpendicular. So if this one is spinning, as we can see right here, it is spinning um, clock, oh, how would you say, no, so if it's going in, it's spin going in counterclockwise. But that means the magnetic field would be going in, in clockwise. It's going opposite. Um, technically it's going both though, because it's going in and out, just like the electric fields are going in and out, being positively and negatively charged, and the motion within them. Um, <sighs> what next? Um, oh, so to do this effectively, you basically need the aluminum covering the whole thing. And that's the question, is if you take a whole paramagnetic substance and make it the toroid, will it be able to oscillate itself? Do you need to connect anything? Will the circuit just work on its own? Theoretically, I think yes. It's just how do you do it? Because um, one thing that will also happen is you can figure out the wavelength. And the wavelength of this guy is this long. With my two fingers right here. Alright? It's cutting across. And so the midpoint of the wave is resting on the donut. Okay? That's how you figure out the geometry of the toroids. And whatever type of winding structure you do. Um, the uh, eight point is the square root of phi, while the pentacle is two over phi, and the triadic um, star of David, that is two to one. Um, so um, you need to make this whole surface all paramagnetic, so a solid piece of aluminum. Um, but the nice thing about wrapping aluminum, at least for now, is it also gets a coat of aluminum oxide, which is diamagnetic. It's, just, it's a, such a molecularly small nanoscale, small piece of um, insulation, but it prevents the conductors, it's, it's a form of insulation, it prevents the conductors from jumping back and forth. But as you build up charge that can break down, the charge can jump across. But, as you're seeing here, we don't have to worry about the way the current moves. I realize that this is intelligent, okay? I only have two connects in. When I'm charging one, the electron's not going to be moving into both. Otherwise, it's going to be compressing on the end. It's going to move into one, and it's going to push some, while the others get pushed on the up other side. And depending on how you wire it and where it's placed, um, the environmental influences, it's either going to spin one direction or the other direction. Um, and it's just smart like that. Uh, yeah. So... An easy way for me to make this whole surface paramagnetic, take refined beeswax, because it's paramagnetic, it's oxygen rich, versus being just a hydrocarbon. Um, and oxygen is extremely paramagnetic. 
and so makes you make these coins out of oxygen. Super cool. Um, using like sound waves and stuff. And so you cover this whole thing in beeswax, um, refined beeswax. And uh, that was a cell phone. My girlfriend should not hate me for hanging up on her, but this is important. Um, you cover this whole thing with refined beeswax, and it will contain the magnetic field. The magnetic field will flow perpendicular to the electric field in this and be contained. Super cool. Um, and so, yeah, if you want to do the rowing coil, you need 18 circuits of this, which is 216 points. That means the matrix is 216 by 216. Very famous number. But the eight, um, the eight point is 144. So it's like the it's the speed of light, the harmonic speed of light. Um, the pentacle is 90. Um, that's why there's related to 30 stones at Stonehenge. Um, and there's also what's it called? Um, the triac one, 54. There we go. So, yeah, there's the rodent coil broken down and how it really works. So, aluminum's your cheapest, best bet. It's aluminum. Aluminum's great. Go with aluminum. And uh, you can start wrapping it. The simplest way is to do the Star of David. Um, to wrap, uh, it's a 2 to 1 ratio. Aluminum on w one triangular going around it and then around the other. And there you go. You have a capacitor inductor, essentially, um, in how it works. And, uh, yeah. Woohoo! Cool! So flip-flop those rowing coils around and maybe start making new coils and start sharing about that and see where this goes and maybe someone can actually get this thing firing right. Um, and we can actually just start doing some cool things. And you can actually get rid of these little prongs on the end, too, in terms of connecting it. Um, you can... I'm sort of working on that right now. Ideally, you want to try and use a transformer to charge this guy without having any inputs because you want this to spin, you want this to move. Uh, we can hear water in this one. This one has uh, Ormus water in it because um, theoretically for a while I was saying the core needs to be diamagnetic. I'm split on that right now whether it needs to be diamagnetic or paramagnetic. Um, the outside definitely needs to be diamagnetic and theoretically I'm feeling the inside needs to be paramagnetic. I'm thinking ferrofluid. Ferrofluid, distilled water on the outside, there you go. Um, there's a construction of the coil um, and there's multiple ways to make it fire. One is to use a, another inductor capacitor using like double cones in the center and it will fire back and forth and you spin that around. Um, and yeah, so thank you and I will talk to you later. Bye.